what is the best diet for performance, for training? Like, how, what have you learned through your career about this? Well, I, I think everybody is different. Um, to me, personally, uh, I implement fasting, um, time-restricted eating, and, and prolonged fasting. What's and the longest it, you've done so far? You've, the you've, longest I've done is five days. You've done I five do it days. quite often. I do, I do four times a year, I do three to five days, uh, water fast. Um, and I, I, I liked it. it, it helps me with inflammation. I think it boosts the immune system. And uh, that does about, the, the, I read papers about, about this. And I, it, it helps me also feel, feel good. It's kind of uh, thera very therapeutic. To uh, physical and mental, or just mental. It, me mental and physical, because when I eat my, when I break my fast and I sit at the table with with other people, it doesn't matter what I eat. If we all eat the same thing, I always tell them. I said my my food right now tastes better than yeah. all of yours, you know, because I, you know, I I have the, this thing that I th I believe sometimes you need to put yourself into suffering to realize how pleasurable something is. And uh, I uh, tend personally, like diet wise, I eat whatever I want, mm -hmm. whenever I want. I don't, I no longer have any problem with this. But if I would have a competition coming up, like knowing that I, what I know now about my body, I would orient myself mo more towards an animal based diet. That's because I've tried different things and that's the kind of diet that I believe helped me having less inflammation and feel better in terms of performance for, for, for doing something physical. So high protein, high fat, low carbs. Well, it's, it, this is, is different between animal-based diet and keto. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's carbs, there, there's a lot of fruit. Uh, I got a lot of the, the, the carbs from the fruit. Okay. Uh, a lot of organs, organs. Um, Organ meats, uh, yeah. I know a little bit about paleontology and, and the, the past of, of, on, about prehistoric human. And, and I, I know that, um, and not, not only about that, I know because I, I've traveled certain place in the world, I went to, to visit the Maasai in Africa, the hunter gatherer tribe. And I know that when they kill an animal, they go for the organs first. And I know a pred most predatory animal, they do the same thing. So organs, I believe is something that normally in, in our culture and in, in the Western part of the world, we don't really eat, but it's something that is very nutritious. Have you been able to convince Gordon to try fasting? <laughs> uh, we always talk about diets. It, it, it's a different situation, I think, for Gordon because he's an heavy weight. He, he doesn't yeah. want to lose weight. You yeah. don't want heavy weight. The range of uh, like my my range was like I was a welterweight and middleweight, but the heavy weight. It's like some of the guys that you compete can compete against. There yeah. they might be three hundred pounds. So if you lose weight, it's a it's a big problem. You know what I mean? So and there is things that will work for me that might not work for Gordon, you know? So he have to make his own experience. And, and I told Gordon, sometimes when everybody goes left, you try to go right, see how you feel with certain things. Experiment. Not, not a topic uh, <clears throat> that's part of your optimization, optimal performance formula. Well, uh, what I used to do before my stomach issues, and for those of you listening who don't know, I had recurring staph infections in 2018. And I took a bunch of oral antibiotics and it just completely wiped out my stomach. So uh, I just was diagnosed, I was misdiagnosed as gastroparesis. So for those of you messaging me on Instagram who are just watching Rogan asking me about my gastroparesis, that's not what I have. Um, they misdiagnosed it and uh, I did some other tests and for four years, I didn't even know what it was. And then I got this, uh, I went to this doctor in California who uh, diagnosed me with, I have H. pylori and then a fungal and a bacterial overgrowth in my small intestines. So the issues in the small intestines. Um, so what I used to do was I used to do like seasons where I'd have uh, a very clean season where I was competing and I would have a lower body weight and then I would do like an off season, kind of like a bodybuilder where I would eat a lot more food and a little bit dirtier food and I would have cheeseburgers and pizza at nighttime to have the extra calories. Um, but now I can't eat those foods because they upset my stomach. So now I pretty much just try to eat whatever I can and maintain the weight the best I can um, based around how my stomach feels. So right now it's like rice, chicken, eggs, fish, vegetables, fruits, and pretty much nothing else. Like anything hard to digest, uh, anything spicy, red meat, 
fast food, all that's all that's hard for me. Which sucks be because in Texas, all the best things, yeah, all barbecue. The best things. And I mean, this diet is really important for you, John. I can tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, is it is that something you think about for athletes at all? Or again, no, this is part of the. No, uh, I've, I've um, to be honest with you, um, I've never seen any measurable improvement in sports performance in jiu-jitsu by change of diet. Uh, I do believe that diet is important for longevity in human beings, and I do think it makes a difference, especially once you get past the age of 40, um, with regards to longevity. Uh, for older athletes, I do believe it makes it some difference, but my observation is in athletes, in, in their youth and working up into their prime, I've seen athletes have the worst diets. Um, uh, God bless Travis Stevens, but that guy won an Olympic silver medal basically on McDonald's and candy. Yeah. Um, uh, George St. Pierre, for 80% of your career, <laughs> you were powered by McDonald's and Coca-Cola. That's with Gene um, Alfredo. That was my, yeah. uh, my, my meal of choice before a championship fight. Uh, Gordon, for his, in his youth, was just five guys, hamburgers. Gary Tonin, same thing. I've worked with Japanese judo players who smoked a pack of cigarettes a day and won Olympic gold medals. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with Russian wrestlers who just ate whatever was put in front of them and their athletic performance was outstanding. Um, I've worked with other guys who did have what would be considered a very clean diet and their performance was no better than anyone else on the mat. So I've, I've, never, I've never seen someone say, okay, I, I changed my diet and because of that, there was a measurable improvement in, you know, in sports performance. Another way to phrase it, though, is um, I have noticed with a lot of elite athletes, what they eat, they begin to believe that that either is not a hindrance or it's actually good. Like Travis Stevens is an example of somebody who eats shitty because he believes it's like it's like a power because whatever he's traveling across the world, he can't rely on healthy, good food to be there. So I'm yeah. going to eat shitty so that that's the, like, my body knows how to perform under whatever Skittles or whatever. Everywhere's got McDonald's. Everywhere's got McDonald's. So yeah. <laughs> that makes like, and they've convinced themselves and you talk about Russian athletes, a lot of them have very strong beliefs about like this, a particular food being good for them. But well, there's, there's no agreement among them. <laughs> exactly, there's no so, agreement. Yeah, yeah. So belief is more important than the actual diet. Yeah. I, I, sorry. If I can, after you know, after a, a night out when you're hangover, I think the best thing, and and I'm saying this in all sincerity, I think the best thing to eat to me was like a, like a cheese cheeseburgers with uh, it's, we call that a poutine back home because it's very fat, it's greasy. So, it, so the next day, when you wake up, I think you feel better because it absorbed the, the alcohol. There you go, 100%. <laughs> but you can train and, and, and my mom, gas, My know? mom told me the same story once. Yeah. And then, then I try, I was like, I was hung over for some party and uh, I woke up, I was like probably, I don't know, 19 or 20, I woke up and uh, my mom was like, yeah, just have a, have a cheeseburger, go, go, eat, go eat something greasy. And I did and I was like, oh, I feel kind of better now. <laughs> I, I do not know the science, the exact science behind it, but I, I, I always notice, and I don't know if it's placebo, but I always notice that if I, if I'm, if I'm, if I party hard and I've been drinking a lot, if I don't eat before I going to bed, if I don't eat shitty food, the next day I will wake up and feel worse than if I eat shitty food, I feel better. I know it sounds crazy. I don't know why, but it works for me. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also hard to do science on extreme performers. So the discussions we're having is amongst the very elite. Mm. You know, th yeah. that this might not apply to a general like recreational athlete, mm. but for the elite, I've just seen champions in every kind of combat sport, and I've never seen a correlation between dietary habit and performance in people under the age of thirty. Uh, I do believe that diet is important for longevity, however, and uh, for that alone, it. it may well be worth investing time in it. But with regards to sports performance, at least in Jiu-Jitsu, I've never seen any significant difference.